In the land of Canaan, where golden fields stretched as far as the eye could see, there lived a man named Abraham, a shepherd and a man of faith. His nephew, Lot, accompanied him on their journey, and together they prospered under the benevolent gaze of the Most High God. As their flocks multiplied and their tents dotted the landscape, whispers of abundance turned into echoes of discord. The fertile lands they called home were no longer sufficient for both households. Abraham, with wisdom etched on his weathered face, gathered Lot for a solemn discussion under the ancient olive tree. Let there be no strife between you and me, Abraham implored, his eyes reflecting the starlit promises God had whispered to him. Choose the land you desire, and I will go the opposite way. Let there be peace between our households. Lot, surveying the lush plains of the Jordan, saw a paradise for his cattle and sheep. Eagerly, he made his choice, leaving Abraham with the arid but serene hills. They parted ways, not knowing that this separation would birth both blessings and trials. Sometime later, a king named Keterlamer rose up against Sodom, attacked it, defeated it, and took everything he could, including Lot Abraham's nephew and all his followers. When Abraham found out that his nephew was a prisoner, he immediately armed his servants. With 318 men, he followed them to Dan and attacked them at night. His enemies began to flee, but he pursued them and recovered all the property, including Lot his relative and his property, as well as the women and other people. When he returned victorious from this battle, the mysterious and intriguing character from the Bible named Melchizedek appeared on the biblical stage. Without having more information about him up to this point in the story, this mysterious man appears, whom Genesis calls King of Salem and Priest of the Most High God. Cloaked in a mantle of otherworldly wisdom, he emerged silently to meet Abraham. He was startled by the presence of Melchizedek. Yet, there was an immediate recognition that transcended the material realm. Blessed be Abram by the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, declared the priest, his voice resonating like a celestial melody. In this unseen encounter, Melchizedek, with eyes that seemed to pierce the veil of time, blessed Abraham. It was not merely a blessing for earthly prosperity, it was an impartation of divine favor, a recognition of a covenant written in the fabric of the universe. As the mysterious priest spoke, Abraham, moved by an unseen force, felt a surge of gratitude and awe. In response, he presented Melchizedek with a portion of the spoils from his recent battle, a gesture that went beyond custom, hinting at a recognition of a priesthood beyond the earthly realms. The priest, in a voice that echoed with eternity, spoke enigmatic words that lingered in the night air. Blessed be Abram of God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. With these words, Melchizedek vanished into the shadows, leaving Abraham standing under the cosmic tapestry, profoundly aware that an encounter with the divine had transpired. The Bible does not offer us more information about Melchizedek's name until a messianic prophecy mentions him again. That prophecy is in the book of Psalms 110, where the sacred writer, directed by the Holy Spirit, wrote, The Lord has sworn and will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the story of Abraham in Genesis, it is notable that Melchizedek knew Abraham, calling him by name. Furthermore, the fact that Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek indicates that Abraham considered him superior and recognized him as a priest of the Most High God. Another important aspect is that Melchizedek offered bread and wine to Abraham, an act that definitely refers to the Lord's Supper instituted by Jesus Christ himself. Now, the name of Melchizedek is only mentioned in the Old Testament twice and again in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews, where the writer of this book gives a lecture on this mysterious priest and the priesthood of Jesus Christ. 
In chapter 5 of the book of Hebrews, we are taught that every high priest was constituted and called by God, and likewise, Christ did not become a high priest himself, but was constituted by God. In chapter 6, it is mentioned that Jesus was made high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. However, it is in chapter 7 where the sacred writer gives us more details about Melchizedek and the priesthood of Jesus. In the book of Hebrews, the writer explains that Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, went out to receive Abraham, who was returning victorious from the battle, to whom Abraham gave tithes of everything. Melchizedek's name means king of righteousness and also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. He had no father, no mother, no genealogy, but the writer goes beyond what we see in Genesis and states that he is neither beginning of days nor end of life and compares him to the Son of God. The writer invites us to consider the greatness of Melchizedek, to whom even Abraham, the patriarch, gave tithes of the loot. The writer expands this comment, saying that the priests coming from the sons of Levi have a commandment to take tithes from the people according to the law, although they were also descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, whose genealogy is not counted among them, took tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Without any discussion, the younger is blessed by the older. According to Jewish tradition and the law, mortal men certainly receive tithes, but there is one of whom it is testified that he lives. In a certain way, Levi, who receives tithes, also paid the tithe in Abraham. All Bible students know that perfection was never achieved by the law or the Levitical priesthood. A question arises, what need would there still be for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? God gave the law to the people of Israel, thinking that the priests of the family of Levi would help the people be perfect. Since those priests could not do it, it was necessary for a different priest to appear, one who was not a descendant of the tribe of Levi, like Melchizedek. This different priest is our Lord Jesus Christ, who was not descended from the family of Aaron, but from that of Judah. The law of Moses says that no one can be a priest from that family, and no priest has ever left it. All this is easier to understand if we take into account that this different priest is like Melchizedek. He is different because he was not chosen due to his family membership, but because he lives forever. The Bible says, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Thus, the law of Moses has been annulled because it was useless, unable to make people perfect. Therefore, we now confidently hope that God gives us something much better, allowing us to be his friends. Furthermore, God swore that we would have a different priest. Other priests were appointed without God swearing anything, but in the case of Christ, God did take an oath, saying, you are a priest forever. God does not change his mind, so Jesus assures us that we now have a better covenant with God. Before, there were many priests because none of them could live forever. But since Jesus will never die, he does not need to pass on the office of his priest to anyone else. Jesus is the high priest we needed because he is holy, without evil, having never sinned. God separated him from sinners, made him ascend to heaven, and placed him in the most important place of all. Jesus is not like the other priests who had to offer sacrifices daily. When Jesus died for our sins, he offered his life once and for all. The priests appointed by the law of Moses found it difficult to obey God in everything. After giving us his law, God swore that he would give us his son as a high priest, made perfect forever. Now, we are faced with a challenge in interpreting who Melchizedek is, specifically regarding his physical existence as a biblical character. In the sacred texts, Melchizedek's name resurfaced, not as a mere historical footnote, but as a prophetic whisper. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, echoed through the corridors of time, connecting that ancient encounter to a future fulfillment. And so, the story of Abraham, 
Lot, and the mysterious priest Melchizedek unfolded as a narrative woven with threads of faith, blessings, and a divine order that surpassed the boundaries of earthly understanding. In the unseen encounters, in the choices made under ancient olive trees, and in the whispers of eternity, their journey continued, a journey written in the stars and etched on the tablets of divine destiny. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. It's totally free.